You know, in machine design, well, actuators are very important, whether it's linear motion, rotary motion, but actuators themselves have gone through an evolutionary process. They were once large, they were once heavy, they use motive power like pneumatics and hydraulics primarily, but there's a whole new generation of actuators. I'm with Keith Knight, he's new product innovation manager with Hayden Kirk Pittman. Uh, Keith, uh, we're looking at an sample array of different forms of actuators here, and one thing that's notable about them is they're small. Why small? Yeah, so that's a great question. Um, one of the markets that we do particularly well in is lab automation. And generally you're dealing with much lighter loads, uh, sometimes still high speed, uh, but the loads you're positioning are going to be, you know, maybe a couple pounds. It could be a test tray carrier or something like that. So you don't need all the force and the thrust that you would maybe at like a hydraulic cylinder, right? Um, also, uh, the other thing that we deal with is uh, tight space constraints. So lab automation specifically, we see this trend where uh, we really need uh, basically more capability in a smaller space. And so if you think about a lab environment, uh, there's a price to that desktop, right? So if you've got a, a piece of equipment in that lab, the smaller you can make it, uh, the better, or the more you can maximize your throughput in the equipment, better, right? So one of the things that we've seen there is a request to basically reduce package size or improve power density, right? And so for example, we've got a, a product here, our screw rail design, where we can combine both rotary and linear motor by just adding a bearing pack on the outside. And so basically what that allows our uh, customers to do in the lab automation space is now address a much larger sample size within the same footprint, because now instead of relying on the typical Cartesian coordinates, where you may lose space from a motor or coupling or something else in your direction of motion, uh, you can combine uh, a polar coordinate system with a Cartesian axis and now do um, basically any sample addressment to the full extent of the uh, machine footprint. Now, uh, from an engineering perspective, of course, uh, engineers tend to think in Cartesian terms. Sure. It's just an easier way to visualize an envelope. And a lot of automation solutions I've seen that must combine rotary motion have the rotary motion elements actually riding up and down on the Cartesian axes of an actuator. So the actuator motions are completely separate. And you have to get into slip rings and all kinds of issues to try and, and, and get that information and power up and down. It sounds like you got a way to maybe address that problem. Right, yeah. So with the screw rail product, actually you'll both do the linear and the rotary component at the base of the machine. And then if you're adding Cartesian, generally it's just an X axis. And so your, your management for cables is all through your typical cable carrier on the X. And then you've isolated um, basically the top addressable portion, portion of the machine um, to just your mechanical components. Now in the lab environments you're talking about, it sounds to me like you may have like a washdown environment. You've actually got to do things like go in and sterilize this equipment. Is that a factor? Uh, in some cases, yes, but most commonly not. Uh, fortunately, with lead screw type uh, drive components, you can use a lot of different uh, materials that are acceptable for washdown, et cetera. And then generally, you know, unlike some of your bearing components, uh, ball screws, linear bearing elements, uh, you don't have to worry about seals or contamination because in general, they're pretty forgiving in that kind of environment. Advanced actuators allow medical device manufacturers to automate the lab environment and do more in a smaller footprint, says Keith Knight of Hayden Kirk Pittman.